uh, continue our journey. Uh, this is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and our theme is Names written in the book of life belong to the Lamb who was slain. And we welcome those of you who are viewing at home. Hopefully you have a worship folder, and we invite you to uh, sing and worship with us. And we're going to begin with the pre-service song, Thy Word. And uh, it's printed for you, and we'll sing it right now, okay? hymns and uh, so today and I'm kind of calling it the songs we never sang in the Lutheran Church so those of you who may have been raised in another section of Christendom maybe you're familiar and the song for today is when the roll is called up yonder how many of you know that song okay many of you do not you must have been raised in the Lutheran Church Anyway, so we're going to come to that, and uh, we'll see where the weeks ahead take us. I thought I'd do that in response to the no singing thing. So let's stand to sing, if you want. Uh, hymn number 127, the three verses of the Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, with the trumpet. Thank you. 
O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory, Glory be to, to God the, in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord, and let us pray. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do gather here this Lord's Day, your day, Resurrection Day, because you, dear Jesus, are risen from the dead, and you live and reign even in our world today. So as believers gather around the world on this day, we look forward to that great day when you come again, dear Jesus. The dead will be raised. Those here on earth will join them in glory, in the new resurrection, with new bodies, in a new world that you will create. And so, dear Lord, help us to be faithful, to remain faithful to you, so that our name is read when the roll is called up yonder. Bless our time together this day. Fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. And before we uh, continue with the uh, song, Because He Lives, Let's do the peace wave. Just stay where you are and turn around, wave to folks around you. And, um, all right. So we're going to continue with a uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither song. Many of you know this one, uh, Because He Lives. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, ladies, man. Take out your Bibles, if you would, please, and uh, turn to the gospel lesson uh, chosen for the day, Luke chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 17. Okay. All right, so this is a uh, uh, from Luke chapter 10, and this is Jesus after he sends out the 72 to do his mission work. All right, let me read. So the 72 returned to Jesus with joy, and they said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And now, if you would, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll read uh, the last verses of Paul's great resurrection chapter in a moment. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So, since the earliest of times, the Holy Christian Church has been singing hymns about the second coming of Christ. Our hymn book is full of those hymns. Easter, of course, is. Uh, not only points to the first resurrection of our Lord, but his second coming, and we have many hymns on that. And our hymn for today is also one of those hymns when the roll is called up yonder. Now, there are a few other hymns that we never sang as Lutheran kids. How about In the Sweet By and By? Anybody remember that one? How about I'll Fly Away? I don't remember that one. How about Won't It Be Wonderful There? Only one person. All right. I got one more. On Jordan's Stormy Bank. Oh, wow. All right. So ours is when the roll is called up yonder. And it's based on 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verses 51, but also uh, second, uh, 1 Thessalonians. But, or we won't read that, but there's two places where Paul talks about this. So if you have your Bible, you can follow along and let me read. Paul says, I declare to you, brothers... Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is true, that the saying will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So these verses speak about the great getting up morning when Jesus comes again and the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, and those here on earth will join them, and what is perishable, this flesh and blood we have now, will be replaced by the imperishable. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people who try and tell us what that's going to be like. And I'm here to tell you, we have no idea. We have no, don't even try and figure it out. You know, and people say, well, we'll be playing golf. And I think, why would you want to hit a little ball around and play golf in glory? All right? So these, per these verses speak about the reality of death that we all have to face. And here's the bad news. You and I are going to die. Unless you watch television, then there are those who think that they can be frozen and they'll bring them back to life. And maybe that'll happen. But who wants to come back at 150, 200 years old? I don't know. That doesn't sound so good to me. But the reality is we will face death. And these verses talk about death not as the final sad end of the chapter of life, but death as a new beginning of life with our Father in heaven. And that will be culminated in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And you know where you hear about this in Christian churches around the world? At funerals, right? At funerals. Because we as believers, we celebrate the reality that our loved one whose casket is in the front of the church, even though that body we're putting in the ground this day, that spirit is with the Lord, and we will see them in that great getting up morning when the roll is called up yonder, when the trumpet sounds and Jesus comes again. And that is the joy and the celebration of the Holy Christian Church here and around the world. Now, where does all this go back? The roll is called the up yonder. Well, I want you to think about a roll. Any of you, uh, you, know, you know how the ancient books were? What were the ancient books made of? Yeah, scrolls. What were they made of? Papyrus, parchment, and? How about skin? Absolutely. Skin. And uh, they were rolled up, correct? Uh, the ancient form before that was, what was before the, uh, the roll, the scroll? Yeah, it was stone and wood, stone and wood. And we have evidence of that, right, in Egypt and other places where they wrote on the stone. Well, if you go back to the Bible and you go back in the Old Testament, you'll find numerous places where the scroll is mentioned and Paul, or God says to Moses, you write this down. Or he says to Jeremiah or Isaiah, one of the prophets, he says, you write that down so that when it happens, the people will know what I said and they won't forget it. You find the roll, if you will, or the scroll written in several books in the Old Testament, Psalms, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. And in our gospel lesson for today, did you notice what did Jesus say to the 72? Don't rejoice that you have power over the powers of darkness, but rejoice that your names are what? Found, written in heaven. Important, all right? St. Paul refers, in his letter to the Philippians, he refers to the people of the church there, those who were beside him or contended with him and with him. He says, their names are written in the book of life. Now, let's go back to the scroll for a moment. Uh, as I don't know if many of us know this, but oftentimes they were written on skin, okay? And Paul's letters, we believe, some of them were written on animal skin. And if you had one side and then you had the other side and you filled it up, what would you do? No. 
you'd say amen. <laughs> and we believe that some of his letters are determined by the size of the skin that was used. Yes. So imagine that. They're traveling, those letters are traveling around the ancient world with whoever, and they're a skin, and they unroll them and they read them. Of course, I don't think any of them are, la are listed, are lasting anymore, although we still have some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, correct? Yeah, so, anyway. So, where are we? John's book of Revelation has a lot to say about the book of life, okay, on many different levels. In, the book of, in John's book of Revelation, the book of life is the list of all the faithful saints of God who fear him, love him, and wait for the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And in, in, in chapter 13, it says to this effect, those names are written in the book of life because they belong to the Lamb who shed his blood to give them eternal life. And that's a wonderful image for us to see, that the names of God's saints, as, as a saint of God, you and I as saints, and our brothers and sisters around the world, their names are written in the book of life, not because they've earned it, not out of merit, but out of simply the grace of God in our lives. And I want to remind you that your names are written not because of your goodness. And a lot, I think that's always been a problem. But it is because of the grace of God through the death of Christ on the cross. Okay? And we need to understand that it is always based on the act of redemption. God's election then is linked to our service and obedience and faithfulness to him. And we need to understand that. I don't know if I preached on that last week or a couple of weeks ago. That, you know, it, God's grace just doesn't happen by accident. We receive it. We accept the grace and the goodness of God in Jesus. And now we respond in what? Faithfulness to him. It isn't like, oh yeah, God, thank you. You know, we're not saved by osmosis. We're saved individually as, I, as Jesus comes to me personally and I come to him personally and receive him. Now I strive to be faithful and to apply and to live my life in obedience to his will. Anybody understand that? And part of that is our labor in the Lord. We'll come to that in the third part of the service. All right, part two. The story behind the hymn. Many of our hymns that we have have wonderful stories, and this one does as well. James Milton Black, he wrote the words and the music for this hymn. He was born in 1856 in South Hill, New York. Anybody know where South Hill, New York is? I didn't bother to look it up. But as he was older, he got married, and he and his wife moved to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Anybody remember Williamsport, Pennsylvania? I think I do. It's eastern Pennsylvania, if I remember. Probably along a river or something, or along a body of water. He moved to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and he got involved deeply with the Methodist Episcopal Church. And there he was a song leader. He was also a Sunday school teacher, and he was a leader of the youth group. Quite a guy, huh? He was involved in the local church there. Well, one day, he was walking the streets of Williamsport. Sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> and he was walking down a back alley. And there in the back alley, he met a 14-year-old girl. Her name was Bessie. She was the daughter of an alcoholic. And Bessie pretty much lived in poverty, shabby clothes, not much food. And you know what old James Black, Milton Black did? He invited her to come to church and join the youth group. And the good ladies of the Methodist Episcopal Church, you know what they did? They gave her some food and clothing and took care of Bessie. Wonderful thing, right? Well, one night, they, as the youth group was meeting, 
and part, part of the group, was, part of that meeting was that what they called a consecration meeting, where they would stand up as their names were called on the roll, and the youth would recite a Bible passage that he or she thought was important to them, okay, which they had read or picked. And so they would call this out, and that night, the roll, call, the roll was called, and each, each teenager got up and spoke, read the Bible verse. And when Bessie's name was called, there was silence. She wasn't there. That affected James Black tremendously, and he went home afterwards, and he talked to his wife about this. I'll tell you that story in a moment. And it bothered him tremendously that, and how, you know, the, her, when the name is called up yonder, no one's there to answer. Well, he finally made his way to Bessie's house. And there she was, sick with pneumonia. And there was no cure. Bessie died within 10 days. And here is the heart wrenching conclusion to the story. He introduced and played this hymn for the first time at her funeral. And he explained to the people all that went on that night when he came home from the church and she wasn't there. And his wife recounts how bothered he was and, she, and, she, and he looked for a hymn for this and there was nothing. And she said, well, why don't you go and write one? Because he was a songwriter. He wrote the words and the music in a little over 15 minutes. And that hymn has been preserved for us probably over, over 100 years. Quite the story for him to play it and introduce it and explain it at this young girl's funeral. So what do we learn from all this? Well, there's several things, and the first one is, I, I wasn't going to use this, but I need to. There's sadness in this song. There's sadness because there's going to be names not on the roll when, when the roll is called up yonder. And as I, I was visiting with someone this week, and we, and we talked about that, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, what if my children's names aren't called. What if a loved one's name, a person I knew for a long time, you know, they're not called. Either because they've rejected the faith or they've never come to the faith. Now, I don't know about you, but that, that is a pain in my heart. That possibility in reality that the name my loved one or is not going to be called on the roll being called up yonder because he or she has rejected it or never came to Jesus. And that leads us to the necessity of verse 3 in our song for today. Don't look at it. But that is about laboring for the Lord. And that's what Paul said too. That we have to labor for Christ and share the gospel with people up to them whether they're going to receive it or not. And I want to say that to you. If you have loved ones, take the time, learn from this, and take the time to share uh, and the importance of the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. So I know that's a bummer, and I know that that's a negative, and it, it's painful, but it shows the need to remain faithful to the Lord Jesus. The second and the third kind of go together. This story and these, these hymns give us a calm assurance of our future heavenly home, that our lives just don't come to an end the day we die, but the glory of the Lord will be revealed and we will experience a new beginning with the Lord Jesus Christ in a world we can't even begin to explain or understand. And to have that calm assurance that my name will be read on the, when the roll is called up yonder. What does that do to you? thought about this since Monday. 
gives you a kick in the pants to live victoriously. That we have this to look forward to. Why can't I live victoriously now? Did you notice how many times Paul used the word victory in the lesson for today? To live now victoriously. Not when I'm old, not when I'm dead, not in the, just in the future, but now. And I want to invite you to live victoriously, with confidence. And you know, especially in these days, where everything seems dark and gloomy, wouldn't it be wonderful if Christians can stand up and say, we live in hope, we live in joy, we know we're living in a pain-in-the-neck world, with pain-in-the-neck people, sin, and disease, and sickness, and all the other inequalities we have. But as a child of God, I'm living in victory because of what Jesus has done for me. And that should expand to those around us. So I say to you, have that calm assurance of what lies ahead and let that be a kick to live victoriously now. And the last thing we learn, hymns like this, meet the spiritual needs of God's people, many of them. They lift our spirits in praise. They provide hope for the present and hope for the future. And hymns like these bind generation to generation. I'll tell you a story. I still remember the hymns of my parents' funeral sir, funerals. And they're in the hymn book. And whenever I sing them, especially one, I usually can't finish singing that hymn. And that is something that believers have, this hymn thing. And I'm just not saying this, although to a certain degree, maybe, because we're on this no singing. This is really close to like not saying you can't use the Bible. Really is pretty close. These hymns bring us together because that music and these words which come out of the scriptures are the power of God in our lives. And so let those hymns affect you and be the power of God in your life to have the calm confidence of what lies ahead and to live now victoriously. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to sing James Milton Black's hymn, which is printed for you in your worship folder. And uh, before we do so, we're going to give you a little guidance, okay? How many of you know this song? Oh, my gosh, not that many. All right. So... Um, you see the refrain, okay? After the third line of the refrain, when the roll is called up yonder, there's going to be a little hold there, a point, a dot with a half moon. You know what that is, music people? All right, you hold that. Whatever it's called, doesn't matter. Anyway, so we're going to hold, take our breath there. And then the, the music has sort of a bouncy kind of thing. It has a rhythm to it. So try and get in that rhythm. Also, if any of you men would like to be the echo in the refrain with me, you're welcome to join me in the words when the roll. But you have to be below a certain note. Okay? All right? All right, give us it. Play the whole thing.
Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. And his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. So, I guess we missed the offering. Uh, why don't you, we'll take an offering now. If you have an uh, offering, bring it and put it in there. And fellas, why don't you just play through the, through the first verse, okay? Play the song, verse 1, of what we just sang. Go ahead. Page seven, I believe it is, uh, in the back inside cover where it says Faith and Fellowship. And uh, there are a number of folks to um, pray for this week. We're going to add to the list Don Lohr. I uh, talked to them this last week, and uh, he is having, has had a history of bad, severe back problems and is going in for a procedure uh, later this month. And also uh, Sylvia. Uh, someone a family in our church knows is in the hospital uh, dealing with COVID. So we're going to pray for her, and you can see the other list of individuals there. And finally, I want to we're going to pray for. I got to tell you this story. Um, pastor, or he's not a pastor yet. Titus Utech. He will be installed and ordained this afternoon at our sister church, Sherman Oaks Lutheran. And uh, he graduated this month or so ago from the seminary. He's 26 years old. Kind of reminds him, he reminds me of me and Debbie. They have two children and one on the way. And the bars were kind of like that. We had one child and one on the way when I graduated from the seminary. So anyway, and I get to go because um, the president of the of that. Uh, district can't come. He'd have to be quarantined. So I, I told him I'm taking the bishop's place. I take the bishop. And I don't have to preach. That's the good news. So we're praying for him. And I want to invite you to pray for that young preacher who raised in the Dakotas and now his first calls in the San Fernando Valley. Wow. All right. Yeah, Lord be with you, brother. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the Lord and giver of life, and our lives are in your hands. We thank you for the Lord Jesus, for his resurrection from the dead, and we thank you for what we look forward to with the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Today, dear Lord, first of all, we pray. We pray for those who are battling cancer, for Beverly Tyrell and Dennis Wrights, we pray for Mei Jung and Sh Carol Shimke. We pray for Manny Teo and Carmen Bello. We also pray, dear Lord, for Naomi, who is battling shingles, and 
for those with back issues, Lucy Blakeney and Debbie O'Donnell and, and Don Lore. Dear Lord, bless these individuals, watch over them, and give them a sense of your peace. We also pray this day for Elaine Lunag as she suffers with back issues, and for Sylvia as she battles COVID-19. Dear Lord, be with her. And all those who are suffering because of this terrible pandemic, we pray, dear Lord, for her full recovery, and we pray for the, that this pandemic may come to an end, that a cure will be found, an antidote, and that we will be able to be done with this time. So bless the medical profession, guide them, lead them, and, be, and lead the research to be able to find a cure quickly. Lord, in your mercy. We pray also this day for Titus Utech and his family as he is installed and ordained this afternoon. Dear Lord, thank you for continuing to raise up men and women to serve in leadership in your kingdom here in the United States of America and around the world. Bless this young preacher. Be with him and his family that he may serve you well and be with the people of our sister congregation that they together may have a wonderful ministry of reaching out to their community. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, dear Father, we continue to pray for these United States of America. And we pray, dear Lord, that you would raise up men and women in this country who love this country and are patriots first. Dear Lord, be with the elected officials on the local, the state, and the national level. Help them, dear Lord, to serve the people of this country well, to be united in one purpose. Give them, dear Lord, on, on, on a respect for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the laws of this land. Protect us from anarchy and socialism in this country. Dear Lord, help us to be people who are united, who serve one another and care for the welfare of each other. Lord, in your mercy, and into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, as we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Spirit bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, one announcement I want to refer you to is the uh, Vacation Bible School announcement in the worship folder. Uh, it will be held uh, about two weeks from now, I think. And uh, you can register. It's very limited to 10 families a day for three days, okay? And uh, the you can register beginning today. So go on our website at www.our-redeemer.org. And if any parents are, are watching of years past, we invite you to be part of this really reduced Vacation Bible School, okay? So let's close with all the ends of the earth, and uh, the words are printed for you. Do we start with the refrain, or do we start with the verse? The refrain, okay.
have a good week, everybody. And Jesus bless you and be safe out there.